Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be talking about how I got into freelancing. So this was an idea for a video requested by Weird Reads, and I know there are a lot of you guys out there who are writers yourselves or aspiring writers, and so it does seem like a, a relevant one to include on my booktube channel. So, well, plus I occasionally do authortube videos, I suppose. So. I guess what we'll begin with is, I will. I haven't planned any of this out, you may notice, I'll start by talking about what it is that I actually do, then I'll talk about like my career path, and then I'll talk about sort of specifics of, of how to make the leap into freelancing. So, basically my job, I am self-employed as a writer, I specialise in writing about technology, publishing and marketing, and... I write all kinds of stuff really from, uh, I'm just currently working on actually, the uh, web copy for a company that tunes and repairs pianos, but I do a lot of web copy, blog posts, white papers and ebooks, that sort of thing, video scripts here and there, I've actually done some scripts for a YouTube channel called Mysterious 5. One thing that I'm doing is I'm actually making some money through my blog, I'm doing a sponsored article from my book blog. I have a client who I ghostwrite books for, but I also do some marketing for him got one who they are like a business to business marketing agency so I write a lot of case studies and again a weekly blog post for those all kinds of stuff really some stuff is like ad hoc some stuff is you know it repeats uh, once a month or once a week or whatever it happens to be and I'm also looking into other ways to augment my income as well so for example last year I made about 1100 pounds on Bitcoin so about fifteen hundred dollars so I was just investing in Bitcoin and then it exploded and then I sold it when it peaked. So that worked pretty well for me. Um, but also things like book sales go into that as well. I might be setting up uh, a, a book depository affiliate link so that I can put that in my booktube videos. Because again, any money from that all goes towards my income as a self-employed person, you know. And really the goal for me is actually to slowly phase back how much work I'm doing for clients. So that I'm just making a living off of you know, my book blog and, you know, maybe this YouTube channel if I can get some money out of that and my book sales and, you know, all these disparate sources all come together and, you know, it's, it's very difficult to make your salary out of just book royalties, but if you can make 20% out of your salary on book royalties and then 15% from affiliate links and 15% from AdSense or whatever, that's already 50% there that you've got covered. So I also have been working on putting some savings behind. Uh, I've also been looking at putting some savings down as well so that, uh, you know, if times do go bad, I can, you know, I can recover. So how I got into this job? Well, I studied creative writing at university because I wanted to be a writer. It's always been what I've been interested in. When I graduated university, I basically was applying for any job I could find that was nearish to London that had writing as a part of it. So that's how I ended up moving to High Wycombe to work in social media marketing because obviously there's a lot of writing for blog posts, social media updates, that kind of stuff. Some of the similar writing that I still do today. But on top of that, I also had to teach myself how to you know, how to run marketing campaigns and run metrics and see whether you're being successful and determine returns on investment and all this stuff. Which actually all came in super useful for me as a writer as well. And in fact, it was my attempts to market myself as a writer that basically gave me the experience I needed to get this entry level job in marketing, you know. And then while I was there, I then picked up a lot on the job. I read a lot of books. I launched my book blog as well. I figured if I'm going to be a marketer, I need to learn to market through my own, you know, blog or website or whatever. So. So that's why I started my book blog back in 2013. That's opened up all kinds of opportunities for me. Like I say, again, I can make some money here and there doing sponsored posts from that, but I, I try and avoid it unless... In, in uh, it's more now if people approach me that I do it as opposed to me actively advertising it as a service or whatever. So I managed to look out on this job. It was actually the first job I ever had an interview for and they offered it to me there and then, which was pretty good. Did have a trial, but the trial went well, so... And... Um, then actually, funnily enough, when I moved on to my next job, that was my second ever interview and I got offered that one as well. So I moved to a company called FST in Marlow, which is basically was similar to what my old company did. So my old company, I was doing social media marketing for a PR agency and the new one, I was doing social media marketing for like a marketing agency, I guess. So it was slightly, slightly more relevant and, you know, I learned a bit more there, but at the same time, I just, I, just, I don't like having a boss, you know, I like being able to work when I want to work. So 
I stayed at FST for a few years and I was looking around at getting jobs at other places. I actually had an interview at the BBC at one point to do social media marketing for them. Didn't get that one. I also had a, an interview at the Culture Trip, which do like travel and whatnot. But it's funny because actually, basically the reason I didn't get either of those jobs was because I wasn't, I didn't have enough hands-on experience because at FST, basically it was just me. I was like the only person doing social media marketing and we didn't have like the powerful tools that people normally use. And so, or any of the resources or any of that kind of stuff. So I just didn't have, they were asking whether I'd use specific tools and I just never had the opportunity to do it, you know? And I realized after a while that while working at FST, I mean, I liked the people there, but um, it wasn't going anywhere, you know? It wasn't pushing my career anywhere. And so I thought it was about time to look into basically doing it myself. I figured if they're not gonna listen when I provide suggestions and whatnot, then I'm gonna be my own boss so I can just do things instead of being, you know, being held back by other people, basically. And this isn't a dig at that employer. This happens at all employers, as far as I'm aware. So what I did, I basically pulled together a portfolio of my writing. It included my books on Amazon and that kind of thing. Some sample articles that I'd done, a few of the clients that I'd worked with at FST. And I started signing up to freelance websites like People Per Hour and Upwork. Those are the main two that I use. A lot of people don't like these sites because they take a commission out. For example, Upwork takes 20% out. But I just made sure that my freelance rates factored in that 20%. So I charge $45 per hour, which is about 35 British pounds per hour. Uh, I've actually been able to increase my fees since last year, because last year was my first year freelancing. And obviously during that first year of full-time freelancing, I started to pick up more clients. So really what I did, my first client actually came through Twitter. They just tweeted asking whether there were anyone knew any freelance writers. I said I'd be uh, happy to help. And he actually became quite a significant client making up I would say about 15 to 20% of my income, but this was while I was still working at FST. So I'm not going to lie. I mean, I had free, uh, freelance work while I was working a full-time job and that was for seven or eight months. And to the end, it got to the point where I was earning more from freelancing than I was from my day job. But at the same time, I was literally going to work, coming home, working. Once I'd handed in my notice at work and made it clear that I was going into freelancing, I actually started using my lunch breaks at work to spend an hour doing freelance work, you know? But this also meant that I could, you know, I could build up a pot of money. I had about 4,000 pounds, I think, in the bank by the time that I actually went freelance. So that was enough to, you know, give me two and a half months wages or something like that. I actually pay my tax up, up front and I have a savings account as well. So I just put money into that each month. I, uh, you know, earn some interest on that as well. Like not insignificant, it's enough for a meal a month or something so like like a, a meal out or something so it's a decent amount of interest and again it's one of those things where money begets money so if you have money it's easier to make more money off the money if that makes sense so um, like another thing I want to look into is like flipping on eBay where I'll basically go in and I'll look at stuff buy it low sell it high I actually have been thinking about doing that with like rare and signed books uh, for example signed JK Rowling books if I can buy one for 30 quid and sell it for 65 or something you know you make a pretty decent profit there I literally I started with that first client who came in through Twitter and this was when I was signing up to the freelance sites as well I made a few more new clients around that time one of them doesn't pay a huge amount but he's been a regular client since then so you know it all adds up and then I started taking on kind of major clients these are people who wanted to hire me for at least 10 hours a week and so once I've got three or four of those, that's really what was filling up my time in the evenings and just meant that I couldn't continue working my job. And like I say, it only took me seven months or so. I took on my, well, I took on my first client in October 2016, and then I went full-time freelance June 2017. And that's included, I had like a two month notice period at work as well. So um, really it took me, yeah, half a year, I guess, of really, really hard work and not seeing anybody and also not writing any of my books. I just didn't have time. But just working on my freelance stuff and building that up. And really, it's now over a year since I've gone freelance and the momentum hasn't really slowed down, you know. I What I do is I just make a habit of applying for a certain number of jobs every day. I mean, I have my portfolio. My portfolio pretty much 
says it all. I've actually designed my portfolio to be kind of minimalist. I didn't want to include too much information in there. So there are some links where you can go off and read some work and whatnot. But really, it's more about the client getting to know me and my journey and whatnot. Because basically, I want to work with people who have a similar mindset to me. And I want to work with people who are almost friends as opposed to clients, you know? So, yeah. I mean, that's how how I got to where I am today. I actually earn less now than I did when I was working full time, but I also work fewer hours. Although, again, I have a terrible sleeping pattern, so quite often I'm working in the middle of the night and whatnot. But again, it also means I get to just chill at home with a cat. It does get lonely sometimes. People told me that before I went freelance and I didn't believe them because people do my head in. So I was like, I'll be fine. I'll just get a cat and just spend my time with my cat. But I do miss people and I probably will be looking into it at some point trying to find somewhere I can go and work with the new laptop that I bought as well. So maybe going to a coffee shop or somewhere like that, even a pub. In fact, I could go to a pub now and do some work. Yeah, I mean, it's very rewarding. I can't, couldn't imagine going back to doing what I used to do. And like I say, even though I earn less now than I did, this is also factoring in all of my expenses. So any editing expenses and cover design expenses for my books, actually ordering in the books, getting 20, 30 copies of a new book or whatever, marketing expenses, my, my new laptop, these all go in under the business expenses, whereas before they would have come out of my personal expenses. So while I'm earning less, that's including those expenses being taken out of my income. Plus then there's the fact that when I used to go to work, I mean, it was 70 pound a month, which is two hours worth of work just to get the bus pass to take me to the office. Then there's the fact that it used to take me two hours each day on the bus. So I've obviously reclaimed those hours as well. Uh, things like food now, because I'm at home, I literally, I'll cook a meal in the evening and I'll eat the leftovers for lunch. Uh, I also, don't just go to the pub at lunchtime when I've had a bad day and have like three pints there just to get me through the day. I'm, I mean, I'm saving money. It's costing me less to live. Significantly less, I would say. I would say a quarter of, yeah, like a quarter of it off. So say it used to cost me two grand a month to live. It's costing me 1500 a month now. And so maybe I'm earning 200 a month less or something, but actually overall it works well, which is why for the first time in my life, I have both personal and business savings. And they're both actually enough. So my business savings, I've got enough to basically pay myself two months of wages and my personal savings, I've got enough to live for two months. So I've actually improved my financial situation even more since going freelance, if that makes sense rather than just saving up a bunch of money before I went freelance by working two jobs. So yeah, that's my freelancing journey. I mean, I was one of, I never thought that I'd be able to do it really. I don't know. I always thought it was like this 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 mythical ability that people had or something and then I just went out and just started doing it. Honestly, just if you want to get involved and start freelancing, make yourself a portfolio. I made mine in PowerPoint because then you can put it on SlideShare and then you can link to it on SlideShare and you can also see the metrics on SlideShare to see how people are responding to it and whatnot. So I made my portfolio, I'll link to it below. Like I say, it's not the best portfolio. Possibly for next year, I might even get a professional designer or whatever to do it, but up until now, it's just been me doing it. And um, yeah, to figure out your rates, your rates, obviously, you need to think about the 20% or whatever that's taken out by the freelancing sites as well. If you do then take on clients who discover you elsewhere through a referral or through, you know, through your website or something like that, having that 20% buffer actually allows you a little bit of leeway. So you could even give them a 10% discount if you really want to win that client and you're still going to make more money from them than you would through the freelance sites. So, um, and that's ultimately what you want. You want people coming to you as opposed to you having to go to them on these sites. But it is a good way of finding people as well. So yeah, if you want to get started, just create your profile, sign up to some freelancing sites and just start bidding for work and see, see what happens. That's all you can do really. And as well, once you've taken on your first two or three clients, it becomes a lot easier too because then you've got this you know proven history as well. So people are more likely to trust you. So, so yeah. That, in a nutshell, is my freelancing journey. I hope you guys found that interesting. I know it's a bit different to what I usually talk about. But I just want to, you know, I think it's a good thing. And more and more people are going self-employed. And, you know, some people look at it as though, oh, well, if more people get self-employed, then it's going to be harder to get work. I don't think that's true because in my case, I hire other freelancers in a similar position to me. So I hire, like, if I need a video guy or a graphics guy or anything like that especially for my books, I then hire out those jobs. So I think it's an ecosystem that can grow with a number of people that are doing it. So, so yeah.
So anyway, on that note, hope you found this interesting. Hit that like button if you did. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.